Hello again. We've been looking at the performance of a Windows 2003 file server using Wireshark and Excel. And we've got to the point where we now have some understanding of the server time. So the server time here is 2331 milliseconds as opposed to a total transaction time on the wire of 1 minute 16.4 seconds, so 76 seconds. Obviously, uh, the other part of the system other than the file server is contributing a much bigger portion, proportion of the response time. So what I mean by that is that everything to the left of this analysis point here is contributing around 14, 1 minute 14 seconds whereas to the right of this trace point here we only have about two and a half seconds. So given that's the case and also remembering that we have this caveat that we've we've overstated the server time in one respect because we have overlapping operations that mean that things are happening in parallel so this 2.3 second value here has been calculated as though everything is happening in a serial manner which we know it's not because we've seen overlapping requests and also we're understating the value because we're not allowing for the time to deliver the data through sequences such as these you can see here but the point is that there's such a vast difference between these two numbers it's quite obvious that there is a problem um, in the client side and, and network side of this system so let's do a bit more analysis of the server time. I'm going to use, I use scatter plots all of the time. Um, they're so useful vis for visualizing response time. And unfortunately, nearly every time I generate a scatter plot, the format goes wrong. So we'll try it. Uh, I can see already the format's gone wrong. I'm going to move this into a separate sheet so that we can. Uh, we can see it a bit better. Scatter plot. That's completely wrong. So let's redefine the series of data. So we go here and do select data, remove that set of data, add another one. Series name is going to be this cell here, and the series is going to be everything in this column. I'm not going to specify an X value. Um, there's a reason for that, which I'll show you in a second. Press OK. OK again. That looks much better. Let's just make that a bit bigger so that you can see it. OK. So what we see here is that nearly all of the response times in this blur down here are, are just multiple plots, nearly all of the response times are far less than 50 milliseconds. In fact, they're far less than 10 milliseconds by the looks of things. But we do have some here that are taking considerably longer. So if we mouse over one of these, and this is the beauty of using a scatter plot, you can see that what it's telling you is that at, point, at plot point 1857, we have a response time of 193 milliseconds. Now if I go back to my sheet, remember that 1857 value, and I type in 1857, A1857 into this box up here on the left, hit enter, and it takes us straight to the point where this happened. And uh, so it actually takes you to the row before because uh, it, it allows one, num one row for the, um, the actual uh, headers. So here what we see is something quite strange if we look at this in a pure se sequential manner. We see a read complete. So this is the end of a read sequence immediately followed by another read sequence that doesn't actually have, doesn't appear to have a re request. But if we back up a bit and find this multiplex ID of 1604, we go up you can clearly see there it is so we had we issued one read request my my pc issued one read request immediately followed by another they're both against the same file 
perhaps we should look at the FID in a minute, but they're both against the same file because the file ID there is the same. And the first request processes, and then once that's completed, then it starts, the server starts to deliver the data associated with the second request. Now for me, that's a valid delay. I would say that's a valid delay because of uh, the sequence in, in which things are happening. So let's have a look at this FID just, just to double check things here because this is quite a good cross check. So we've got a FID of hex C00E. So we go back to the top of the sheet. Let's do a search for C00E. Now the interesting thing with this particular NT Create an X uh, request is that if we look at the path value it's blank so what I'm going to do is I'm going to check to see if I have any other because um, these numbers get reused so let's put in the whole thing I have to be careful that I get this get the format correct here and to create and x comma fid colon space zero x c zero zero e so we have another one there at row 898. I'm going to check again. No, so we just have these two. If we go back to look at the time that we had the problem in the spreadsheet, which was row 1847, I think. So if I put it in here, nope. 18 Five seven perhaps. Yeah, one eight five seven. So that was at seventeen thirty one nineteen, and so that's after the first uh, of the. It's definitely the second NT create and X we're concerned with. So we go back to the top, do the find, we find it once, find it a second time. Yeah. So this is the applicable. NC create an X. So as I said, the you use this command with a different disposition to open existing files or to create new ones. You can see that this is an open for indeed the file that we're interested in, which is this PDF. So let's uh, quickly have a look at the trace. Just out of interest. See, this is the beauty. You can switch backwards and forwards. So if I go back into the trace and I do control G to go to a packet and I put in 938 it takes me straight to the packet there's our packet let's just check that we're opening the right thing yep we're opening the right thing and just here you can clearly see that Wireshark has interpreted these uh, flags in this field above and shown you that this is an NT create for with a disposition of open which means if the file exists, open it. If it doesn't, fail. And if we look at the response, and we look at the uh, NT status, just there, we can clearly see that the status was success. So that all looks good. So I'm going to go with the idea that my... Um, my particular response time at that point was a good response time. Let's go back into the scatter plot. Let's check one more. This one. Let's check the biggest one. That one there. So that's 288 millisecond response time. Plot point 2067. Go back to here. A2067. And we've got a similar thing going on. That's quite interesting. So again, we've got a read sequence and then followed by another read sequence so the delivery of all this data above obviously took two around 280 milliseconds and that delayed the delivery of the next lot of data so again if we move up we can see we've got the same situation we issue one read we immediately follow it by another read and the first block is delivered and obviously that takes time and so then we move on to the second block and so that's why we have a 288 millisecond delay there and again I would count that as being valid I'd be happy with that
So I hope that's given you some idea of what you can do with Excel and Wireshark. It's pretty powerful stuff. And um, I'd encourage you to if very strongly to get into this stuff and use it because once you get get the knack of using some of the formulas and um, using the filters in Wireshark, it's a great way to investigate performance problems. I'll see you soon.